Top Trader is brought to you by Sanlam iTrade and powered by Pyrrhus, now with a new Iris trading platform. conversation on Twitter. Our Twitter handle at TopTraderTV and please use the hashtag hashtag TopTrader2012. You can also visit www.toptradertv.coza. While the top two positions seem to be set, Promise has shown his skill and is back in the third spot. Welcome to episode 7 of Top Trader. Now it's early morning here at CNBC Africa and we're in the canteen with, as you can see, contestants right behind me. Now today's focus is going to be on commodities. Good morning guys. Uh, welcome. We went through a, a, a long cycle where commodities uh, uh, shares outperformed the market. The top 40 index outperformed the all share index because it's heavily weighted in the in the commodity shares and suddenly it, it turned the other way in the last 12 to 18 months. Commodities viciously out underperformed industrial and financial shares. Let's look at a few indicators and this is the relative valuation of the Laggards versus the FTSE in World Index. So Laggards are those shares that have been underperforming for 12 months. Uh, for your general portfolio this is not just commodities this is all shares. Um, I think we might be close to a time where you have to look at some of those laggards and commodity shares are definitely have been lagging quite substantially so it might be uh, turnaround time there. If you have a market running up your high beta shares will outperform on the upside but they will also heavily underperform on the downside. Commodity prices um, this is the real commodity price index so it's adjusted for inflation and when we look at it at, at some of private investments, um, uh, we usually look at real uh, prices and we do a median and a standard deviation. You can see uh, last year we were actually a little bit on the expensive side. It's now come back into fair value territory. Um, so commodity prices are definitely not cheap. The share valuations I think are cheap, but uh, the commodity prices are not cheap, but they are at least in fair value territory. Uh, so, uh, not, not worrying at this stage. Okay, let's go to gold. Uh, what we did see, ETF uh, demand um, has been quite, quite growing and we see a big s slip in the second quarter of 2012. Um, so that has come down. I, th I would suspect it has increased a little bit in the, in the next quarter, in the third quarter. So that has some bearing on, on the gold price. Uh, the other thing is the, I think that's important, obviously your, your investment demand, your, uh, uh, which includes your ETFs and golden coins and stuff, quite volatile, also have been declining. And then the uh, central bank buying, quite strong buying in the second quarter. So they picked up most, most of the slack of the ETFs, but not all of it, um, but they have been buying Quite substantial. The Top Trader Viewers Competition is heating up on the Sunlam iTrade Facebook page. Predict the final three Top Trader contestants and stand a chance to win a 10,000 Rand trading course from Share Direct. Visit the Sunlam iTrade Facebook page and enter via their promos app. The competition closes on Friday, the 26th of October at 9 a.m. Time for our traders to report back to mentors Narina Fisser and Ashraf Mohammed. So, how did they fare with the new rules? How's the, the last uh, couple of weeks been for you? How did you experience that? Um, you know, it's, I don't know, I, like I said in my updates, I know I've been trying to keep my trades as realistic as possible. So, I mean, the, tra the change, it didn't 
affect me too much. Yes. I was still able to trade with Caesar. I mean, I'm not. I'm just not able to trade it as quickly as I normally can. Early on in the competition, I told myself because I had expected that a cost would be introduced. So, like I was saying, I was trying to keep my trades as realistic as possible. So I wouldn't go into a trade where I knew I wouldn't get two percent off mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So my minimum was always like if I can pick up a four percent or pick up a five percent. That's what I was going to do because mm. I mean you have to before you even make any money you need to make a certain amount yeah, yeah. you know so you can move Just in and out. All in all, I think you handled the changes quite well and um, you know I certainly must compliment you on on having already had the right frame of mind I think from the word go yeah. to, to to actually do it in that way. My advice to you is if you want to create the right watch list and it's something that uh, an exercise I did with uh, a Quants team twelve years ago is that. Of the top 40, if you just bought um, 18 stocks back then, you could almost replicate the market. Um, you'd, you'd have an error rate of around 3, 3.5% wow. in terms of performance relative to index. You've got to follow the process that you have right now. Otherwise, yeah. you know, you're going to start uh, becoming yeah. a bit well, of a I'm psychopath. Glad, I, have, I was actually thinking about it. I, I won't lie. Cause I mean, I, I'd been very irritable and it wasn't even trader related or school related. <laughs> you know, that Caesar, Caesar Day mistake that I told you guys about, yeah. that was just, ah, I was so angry at myself. I'm like, wow, but when I, the last time I'd made a mistake like that was way early on. It's been tough, you know, I've had to, I know that I've had to go all out because um, last time I was in the bottom three. It hasn't, the market hasn't really gone the way I wanted to because I, I knew that I had to be investing more aggressively in sort of the sector that I would look to in those cases would be resources because they're the most volatile, but of late of all the strikes and everything they've been going the other way so i haven't really been in the resources which is where i wanted i was targeting mainly because you'll find there that those are the kind of stocks that can be doing you know high percentage moves in a day i mean it feels bizarre to think that we're in a strong bull market but we know that we've been hitting these these new highs all along but typically in a strong bull market your your ex-dividend actually just gets swiped yeah, up within yeah. the, the first day or two after it so um that was that's been good for you it's been a good strategy and and i think that certainly helped you a lot also i think in providing maybe a stronger um cash or or yield underpin to your performance rather than just relying on price movement to actually get you get you where no, you're for going sure. it's so. sort of an extra little kicker yes. you know you almost have to stick true to your trading strategy um, rather than you know trying to game the system in some way or the other so yeah. it's probably been more difficult for you relative to the others but how do you see yourself in 10 years time though you can't be day trading in 10 years I don't time. you know <laughs> <laughs> who knows if, if I think if I did well I might be retired by then <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, when I came into this competition, I was like an emotional ball of I'd fire, I don't know what it was, I'm looking at the market, is it going up, is it going down? And through this process, what you've taught me is, is to take emotion out of it. For example, my trading now, I'm trading shares even in companies that are, are having difficulties with strikes, etc. But it's not about the emotion. In the last two months, um, I've been trading the same strategy in real life that I'm trading in the competition. Yes, I'm using much smaller volumes in real life, <laughs> and, and it takes longer to, to make it, but the portfolio is green, and it's saying that I'm taking the results and I'm, I'm putting them in real life and it's working and, and I'm thrilled. Best thing I've heard, you made money out of the Sharia Fund Index yeah. because I helped set it up. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I'm not too stressed about Vasti as I am about this. Um, <laughs> you can get through political risk and get through economics, but uh, trying to navigate through the market is <laughs> slightly more challenging. I've got aspirations of becoming a hedge fund manager in the next couple of years. So my focus has always been um, you know, that 100K that was given to us, you know, my perception was that, you know, you guys are the clients and CNBC is, is the client and I need to try and maximize returns, but not also um, taking unprecedented risk. Um, so throughout, hence, I've also kept in touch and asking questions about, you know, the risk management, whether or not it's still take coming to play, because I feel that that's fundamentally the most important thing. Without it, you know, then there's no difference between traders and gamblers. I didn't reach my target for this month. Uh, but, you know, it happens. Uh, made a couple of bad decisions, most recently with AVI. I uh, was in on it. Um, I was holding it for a couple of days. You know, initially it popped, uh, and then it started having a, it was in the, on a sideways trend and for about two days or so. You really sold it on the back of the fact that you were coming to sit with us today. Yes. Mm. And, but, I mean, that, was, that wasn't the right decision. I mean, you, you buy stocks when they're cheap, 
and you sell them when they're expensive. And those are the simple rules of trading. That's how you will make money. What you're basically doing is what, what we often refer to in the market as window dressing. When there's a special event, whether it's a quarter end or whether it's a client meeting, whatever, you suddenly trade to make things look good. And that's one of the surest ways over the long term to destroy value. The most important thing is you've got to actually understand your psychology and how psychology affects markets. It's 70% of price action. The other 30% is fundamentals in my views. I've got a bit of a bone to pick with the mentors though. Um, <laughs> the giving me hope, having seen what the guys are making on TV, I think that was almost irresponsible. I mean, on what planet? <laughs> so why are you picking the bone with the mentors? Do you think that um, attack is the best form of defense? No, I just think, uh, you know, you could have just said, you know, Stephen, it's nice to have you on TV, but really you're... Uh, you're not going to win this competition. Well, there are two ways of looking at it. One is your way. The other way is to say, you know, you see, you've watched TV, you've seen what Saul's made, you've seen what Jared's done, and uh, that could have revved you up. I look at trading, uh, the day trading, the technical stuff, all the, the clever things that these guys do. I see there's a lot of opportunity to make money, but it's, uh, it's not how I roll, and uh, it's not how I'm going to roll. Uh, so it's strangely uncapitalist of me, but uh, it just it do, it, it doesn't feel pure. The reality is that trading is not for everybody. Trading is not something that everybody wants to do on a professional basis or even on a, on a part-time hobby or, or amateur basis. And to, to discover and understand that, I think is also a very important understanding to have of yourself. Uh, I think, unfortunately, I have to agree with you that I don't think you're cut out for this. So. But I think you will make some professional money managers and, uh, and brokers very happy because clearly they're <laughs> going to be making money off you. <laughs> um, how do you feel you've adjusted to the changes in the rules? I ran away from my e-liquid watch list and okay. ran into my new watch list of ETFs and ETNs okay. because any volume is matched with regards to them. Okay. And I knew that my portfolio had grown substantially and was quite a big amount, so I needed to use that in the competition for my advantage. Mm. So I tackled the sector which volume could continue going all in. Okay. I think you've actually unfortunately missed out on lots of opportunities because you didn't move up within the share universe in terms of that. Um, also I see that you, when you did trade shares, you were still trading in those very small illiquid shares. And this time around, it, it, it has now started affecting it for the simple reason that when you buy, you happen to buy on a day that the volume is decent, you get a nice big chunky position. Mm. And then when you try and sell, you find suddenly that you can't sell out all in one go. It's part of the lesson that I've seen or the impact that I've seen in your portfolio over the last couple of weeks is that the impact of, of real trading compared to paper trading mm. has not translated very well just yet. Mm.